Okay, here's a surface to surface launch projectile practice problems, starting from the top. Launch from ground level, initial velocity is 10 meters per second, angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal, sketch a picture of its trajectory. I can't remember if I did this in class, probably not. Let's do a quick sketch, we're not getting to, you know what, just get rid of that. Get right into it. Surface to surface should have our um, nicely symmetrical parabola. We know what the vertex, we're going to call that the vertex. We have our maximum height that we reach. That's the spot where we know the f uh, velocity in the y direction at max height h is zero, just like when you threw uh, something straight up into the air. It's good to have a little indicator here of the initial velocity. Be I, and remember we always break that down into its horizontal and vertical parts. So there's V I X. There's some angle theta, which I think we're told is 60 degrees. We also have a vertical component. Draw it on this side of the velocity. Call that V I Y. Okay, and nice little surface to surface launch sketch. Um, oh, and that VI is 10 meters per second. I'll add that to my picture there. VI is 10 meters per second. Um, B, to determine the max height reached by the projectile. So in the surface-to-surface -surface launch um, video I did, you can see the derivation for the max height. Um, it is VI squared sine squared theta over 2G. And as a quick reminder, this is where that's coming from. Um, 2G delta Y. You're saying this H over here, pretend that's your delta Y. So we're counting the, the trip from the beginning to the highest point. The final velocity there would be zero at the highest point in the Y direction. So you have minus VIY squared over minus 2G is delta Y which delta y is that max height you're talking about. You lose your minuses there and you're left with viy squared, which is vi sine theta squared, 2g is delta y, and that exponent is distributed to those two terms. So there's our max height. Um, we can calculate that real quick because we already have a formula for it. So initial velocity was 10, so I have 10 squared, and then I have sine, you can write it like this if you'd like, 60 degrees, and that whole thing is going to be squared. So sine of the angle is its function, and that's also going to be squared. So sine 60 is square root 3 over 2. So if we have two of those, that would be sine 60 squared, so we'd end up with 3 over 4. So essentially upstairs I got 100 times 3 quarters, which is 75, right? Over 2G, well that's 2 times 10. So we got, what did I say, 100 times 3 quarters is 75, divided by 20. And then we can always pull out our trusty calculator at any point. So we've got a little less than 4, 3.75, I don't know. Let's just, I'm, I'm going to work in... 3.75, look at that, look at that. 3.75, and what is this, max height? Meters, okay, we think about that. How reasonable is that? Well, launched at 10 meters per second, um, but it's only the vertical component of the velocity that matters for determining how high it's gonna go. 10 sine 60 is 8.66 meters per second. And if final velocity is going to be zero, it's going to be that value. Um, Vi sine theta divided by little g would give us the amount of time it takes to get up there. So our time should be, well, that's the next thing to look at. Determine the total amount of the time, or sorry, the time it takes for the projectile to reach its max height. We have an equation for that that's derived uh, t to max, uh, max height, t sub h is what I was calling it. So that's just going to be VI sine theta. As a reminder, that is what the green component is there. So you're just saying the vertical component of the launch velocity divided by little g. That gets us our 
t time to max height, and that's just coming from this equation, biy minus gt, and then we're saying at its highest point, final velocity is zero, so I've got minus viy over minus g equals t, so negatives go away, and I've got velocity in the y direction initial divided by little g. So what do we have? Um, vi sine theta 10 sine 60 is 8.66 divided by little g is 10, so time to max height is 0 0.866 seconds. All right, so we can go and check our, our height here. We could say, okay, we know the time. Um, could do, which one could we do? Let's just do it like this to do a quick check. V I Y T minus one half G T squared. If we're talking about going half the total parabola, so we get to our highest height, then delta Y is going to be our capital H. We'll check and see if we get 3.75. Initial velocity in the Y direction is 10 sine theta, which is 8.66, because theta is 60 degrees, times our time, which is 0 0.866, minus one half G Zero, why are the bells still ringing? It's Friday. 0.866 squared. Um, I got my minus in the right place because down is negative here. So I got 8.66 times 0.866 minus half of 10 is 5. Why am I doing it on this calculator? I'm sorry. I always forget I got this one. 8.66 times 0.866 minus 5 times point, point, come on, 866 squared, 3.74978, so 3.75. All right, so our time and our max heights are checking out. I've used the right, I'm just recalling these equations from uh, memory, but it's easy to quickly derive them again. All right, let's clean up some of our space here. Our next question is total time, I believe, and we discussed that uh, the time to max height, which is the time to get up here, is half the total time. So the total amount of time the projectile is in the air is going to be twice 0.866. So I have 0.866 times two. Total air time is 1.732 seconds. So we can say T, oops, wrong T. That's for torque. T total is 1.732. 732 seconds. Double that to get to max height. And we can say what that equation would look like. It'd just be twice VI sine theta over G. All right. Um, so we're done with that, that, that. Calculate the range of the projectile. For surface to surface, we have our special range equation that is derived in full um, for you in the surface to surface projectile video. Vi squared sine two theta over G. Vi is 10 squared sine, what is our angle? 60, so we're at sine 120 over 10. Let's do it all at once. So we got 100 sine 120. What is sine 120? That's the same as sine 60, right? So it's still square root of 3 over 2. So it should be 100 square root of 3 over 20. So got, I'm just going to put it all in 10 squared times sine 120 over 10 is 8.66. 10 squared sine 120 over 10. Because then that would be 100 square root 3 over 20 is 5 square roots of 3. I'm just checking my button hitting. Look at that, 5 square roots of 3 is 8.66. <clears throat> which makes sense because it's 10 times square root 3 over 2, which would be... Five square root three. Okay, so there's the range. Make sure you get your units in there. Is it meters? Yes, because it was launched in meters per second. Uh, if the initial velocity of the projectile would, would double, were doubled, how would its range change? You can just look at the range formula here. If I took vi and made it twice vi, this is going to change into 
delta x equals 4, because 2 squared is 4, vi sine 2 theta over g. And you'll notice that this portion, this is how I show factor changes, but vi, oh, I forgot the squared. Sloppy. Okay, so 2 squared is 4, and then vi squared sine 2 theta over little g is still there. So this new range, call it range number 2, because you've doubled our launch velocity, will now provide a range that is 4 times larger. So the range will be 4 times larger if we double the velocity of the projectile. All right, surface-to-surface -surface projectile is launched with an initial velocity of 30 at angle 45. Sketch a picture of the projectile's trajectory. Uh, no thanks. It looks like this. All right. Um, what are the initial horizontal and vertical components of the projectile's um, launch velocity? So my VI, that's the things I'm always drawing in purple, is 30. Our angle is 45 degrees. So VX is VI cosine um, theta. Let's write it generally. Um, VY is VI sine theta. In this case, 45 degrees, you get an isosceles triangle. The sine and cosine of 45 degrees are both square root 2 over 2. So I have for VX 30, let's just put it in the calculator instead of writing it as exact values. But you could perfectly welcome to do so on the test. Exact values are fine. I like them more, actually. 30 cosine 45 is 21.21. And that should be the same. These are VIs, VIX, VIY, initial velocities, 21.21. Um, These are both going to be the same because it is a 45 angle. So this would be also 30 times square root 2 divided by 2 produces the same result. So that's also 15 square roots of 2. So you could say that's the, you could express those components that way if you like. 15 square roots of 2 meters per second would be fine. Um, determine the max height reached by the projectile. You can use the same max height equation, vi squared sine squared theta over twice g. Let's so see if we can do this one with the exact values. So vi was 30 squared, and we have the sine, we're going to have the sine of 45 squared. So that means we're going to have square root 2 over 2 times square root 2 over 2, which is 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So this will just be 30 squared over 4g, or 40. So 900 over 40, whatever that is. 900 over 40 is 22.5 meters. Let's check it fully in the calculator. If I put everything in at once, I have 30 squared. And then I actually don't even know how to put these in with this type of calculator. It should be fine enough. I always put the parentheses, sine 45, close, close, squared, and then divided by 2g, so divided by 20. It's 22.5. Hooray. Determine the total flight time of the projectile. That was t total is twice vi sine theta over g. t total is um, do, 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 2 times 30. Hey, what happened to my multiplication? 2 times 30 sine 45 over 10 is 4.24 or 4.25. No, 4.24 seconds. Oh, wait, did this say, yeah, total flight time. So T sub T, total flight time. Um, looking good, looking good. Determine the range of the projectile. Oh, guys, did I do two? I did do two times 30. Sine 45 over 10. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to check that with exact values real quick. So let's say I did uh, 2 times 30 is 60, and then it would be square root 2 over 2 times 10 is 20, so that would be 
60 over 20 is 3 square 2. Is that right? Did I just do that right? Sine 45 is square root 2 over 2. We're launching at 45. Square root 2 over 2. Yeah. 3 times square root square root 2. Close parentheses. It's 4.24. Oh, I just love it. Okay. Great. I like checking it like that. Determine the range of the projectile. Okay. Here we go again. Delta X is, this is part E, is vi squared sine 2 theta over g. So delta x, let's do it with the calculator first. Do, do, do. So vi was 30. Oh, I need to use the mouse. 30 squared times sine. Oh, we're launching at 45, so I don't even need to write this. It's sine twice 45 is 1. So 900 over, so it's 90. Okay. And then if we did that exactly, we would have 30 squared times sine of twice 45, which is sine of 90, which is 1. So you have 30 squared, which is 900, divided by 10, which is 90. Now we, we aren't even going to check that one. If its initial velocity were quadrupled, how would the range change? Okay, well, this is the same question as before. If we look at what the range equation is, vi squared sine 2 theta over g. Now, if you say if you quadruple this, then it'd be 4 times initial velocity. And then we'd get a delta x, which is, so 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. Right? So we've got 16 times vi squared sine 2 theta over g. So you quadruple, if you double it, you get 4 times the range. If you quadruple it, you get 16 times the range. It, range. it varies with the square. That's one way to say it is delta x, or the range, varies. That's the bad writing of the symbol. Varies with um, the square of the velocity. So you say vi squared. All right. Um, all other things being constant. A uh, surface-to-surface -surface projectile is launched with an unknown initial velocity. It travels to a maximum height of 100 meters. It's launched with an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. What was its total initial velocity? So here's one in which we're saying vi is question mark. And we know its max height is 100 meters. And its angle theta that it's launched at is 30 degrees. So given something like that, we're really just saying, okay, max height, we know that that is vi squared sine squared theta over 2g. So if we want to solve for vi, then I'm going to rearrange and I'm going to have 2gh over sine squared theta. That'll equal vi squared. So I'll take the square root and I get vi. And let's do it with exact values first. So we've got square root, 2g is 20. So we've got 20 times the height, which is 100. So I've got 2,000 upstairs. And that's going to be meters squared per second squared, technically those units. Here squared per second squared. And then downstairs we have, which is what we want, because square root of that is going to be meters per second. Downstairs is sine squared theta, so theta was 30 degrees, sine 30 is 1 half, All right, sine 30 is 1 half, so this squared is going to be 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 quarter, so downstairs I have 1 quarter is vi, and that's the same thing as 4 times 2,000. So square root 8,000 meters squared per second squared is my initial velocity. Square up oh, mouse square root 8 doot 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 is 89.44. Wait. Yeah. 89.44 meters per second is vi units box. Okay. And then I can go back into my, uh, you know, take it back and make sure you didn't mess up on some any any pushing buttons or rearranging your equation, and 
calculate the max height again or something. So we'd have 8, 9.44 squared times, and I open parentheses, sine 30, close, close, squared divided by twice g would be 20, and there's 99.99, so there's the max height that it reaches. Looks good. All right, what do we got? A cannon is aimed at a 45 degree angle above the horizontal. It lands 100 meters down range. What was the muzzle velocity of the cannonball? So, or the of the cannon, whatever. There's 45 degrees. It's going to go do 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 do, and it's going to land. 100. What did I say? 100 meters uh, down range. So there's 100 meters. There's where it lands. So that's the range, and we're looking for the muzzle velocity. That'll be the initial velocity of the thing. So that's question mark. Switch colors. And when I'm given the instead of being given the max height, I'm given the, the range of the object, and it's a surface -to surface launch. So I might as well pull out the range equation for surface to surface, and then I need to rearrange it because I'm solving for vi. So I've got delta x times g over sine twice theta square root is vi. And it's at 45 degrees. So the sine of twice 45 degrees, we've said already, that's the sine of 90. That's 1. So I can even simplify this and say it's just square root delta x times g equals vi. You know what? I don't think I've ever rearranged this equation and just looked at it. So if you have the range and you know it's launched at 45 degrees, which is what you would want to do to launch it to get the maximum range, then the velocity necessary will be square root range times gravity. Huh. All right, well, let's see what it is. We got 100, so that's square root 1,000, right? 100 meters times little g is square root 1,000. And there we go. Let's put it in the calculator anyway for fun. One, two, three. Is 31.62, as it always is. Meters per second is VI. I don't know why it looks like a T. VI. And then remember, we can always go back and check our substitution by putting it in the range equation. So we'd have 31.62. I've rounded it now. Notice squared times sine, sine, I wonder if I need to put a multiplication symbol on there, probably not, I shouldn't, sine twice 45, which is redundant, that's just 1 over g is 10, 99.98, so not 100 because I rounded the velocity value. Is that all? Yeah, that was it. Look how short that was. All right, I'll do one more. At some point, uh, maybe Saturday, I don't know. Depends on how much time I have. On the non, uh, you know, the, the kind of weirder projectiles that are launched and land at a different height because, I mean, I'm probably just going to put those on the test because those are more complex and interesting. So I'll make another one on those. All right, that's enough for now. Bye.